Today we're going to be installing a ZR1 wing from Extreme Online Store on a C7 convertible. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Scott and today we're going to be installing a carbon fiber ZR1 wing from Extreme Online Store on this C7 convertible. Now you've seen this car in a lot of our videos. We've done a lot of stuff to it. We've just got done putting side skirts on and a front splitter and you guys have already seen me do that type of work a bunch of times. But uh, once he got done seeing the quality of the skirts and the, side and the uh, front splitter on the car, we were talking about the, his car was sitting right next to mine and he's like, man, that would be really nice if they actually had that wing in carbon fiber. And they actually do. So um, I'm gonna give you that information so you can find yours if you wanna get one. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna show you how it's installed. Now I know that I did a video a while back and this video will be similar um, but the original video that I did was for, mine was the very first wing that Extreme Online Store had ever done. And so it was a, uh, I had put a, the one size wing that they had for the Stingray on, but um, they now have the, even in the carbon flash, they have the carbon flash as well as the carbon fiber ones that you can get to the exact size that you want. So whether you have the Stingray body or if you have a Z06 or, a, um, or the Grand Sport, you can get the, the wider model. So um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the Grand Sport model on today on the, on the convertible. Now I've already done uh, a couple of these already and they look awesome. And I, I'm gonna show you that here in a minute. Uh, you know, you'll be able to see it's getting done here, but it just looks wonderful um, and the carbon fiber one if you guys were looking at the original video that I did um, on mine you have to put a support bracket inside the wing and epoxy it in um, the carbon fiber one you don't have to do it's extremely solid and so if you are going to be taking the car to the track that's the one I highly recommend that you do um, they are considerably more money but they're well worth it so anyway, guys, sit back, relax, and I'm gonna show you how it's done. All right, guys, we've got the car up in the air, and you know, there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but I'm starting at the bottom, and this way I can show you the bottom part of it first. Usually I start at the top, but we're gonna go from the bottom part, and then we'll bring the car back down. We'll take the top part of it apart. But what we've got to be able to do is we've got to be able to get the back bumper off in order to put this wing on. So you're going to need a uh, seven millimeter um, screw here or a nut driver, okay? And those are, there's four of them located right here, okay? And then you've got two here on each side. So you've got your four and your two on each side, as well as right up in here, you've got two 10 millimeter bolts that are right here, okay? And then at that point, once we lower the car back down, you can see I have the tape, I've already cheated and put the tape up here like this. This is to prevent you from chipping your paint and hurting your paint when you use your nylon pry tool to be able to get the, um, the bezel off for the, the taillight. And then there's a 15 millimeter Torx that's right up inside here. Now, once you drop these four screws, you have to be able to take the rock guard itself off. Now, once you do that, you've pulled this, those are snapped in place. Now, if your car, these, these happen to be the wider uh, XL mud flaps, but if, you, if your car just has the smooth ones, they come off the exact same way, they'll just snap off. And then that will reveal two 15 millimeter torques that's up inside the wheel well here that you need to remove to be able to get the bumper to come free. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this stuff off now. Just like that. All these screws are the same, so you don't have to worry about where they come from. Let me get over here on this side so you guys can see it. All right, 
And then we'll go ahead and we'll set these screws off to the side here. And then I'll take my, my little nut driver off. And you're going to need an extend, extended, uh, you can see I just have all the different extensions on here, but you're going to, you could use a regular uh, socket and ratchet with an extension on it to be able to get up inside here. And those are located right in here. Okay, and you pull those little guys out and you can see there's your little 10 millimeter. Okay, and there's one right there. Okay, so now we're done underneath. Now we can lower the car back down and we'll get the rest of the stuff off. So before I lower the car down, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pop these free. So you can just, you can literally just pop them right out like that. They just come off with those clips. You can see that. Those are just in there like so, okay? And you can move this off to the side, get it out of the way so you don't step on it. That really brings you to your two screws that are right here, okay? And that happens on both sides. So I happen to have a, uh, uh, 90 degree a bit that I can put in my gun um, Which makes it a heck of a lot easier. So if you have one of those it, it makes your life really really great. These things are available from Lowe's for like 15 bucks. They're not that expensive So that, you can see how easy that was rather than trying to get in there and do it sideways. So That's all there is to that so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to jump over to the other side, take those off, and then we're going to drop the car down and we'll be good. So we've got the car down on the lift and now we're going to take the top part of the car loose. And so what we're going to do is there's this little trim right here and you can see right here it goes into the back of the bumper. Now this car has been pulled apart a few different times for various different things. So this one will probably come across a little bit easier this, that these pieces are going to come off. Now, if you are fighting this and it does not want to come free, start on a corner like so, and you'll see that there's some little plastic tabs right here. You can see right there. So what you can do, let me grab my nylon pry tool. What you can do is you can actually, as you pry it out, you can press the plastic down in there with your pry tool and then pull it out. Okay, so this one, like I said, has been a part multiple times for different things with lights uh, um, you know different spoiler before different things so so it's uh, this one comes comes apart pretty easy yours if you've never done this before you've still got your original spoiler on um, I guarantee you it won't come across this easy but um, it's not hard just take your time okay all right so we're gonna set this off to the side now at that point we've got to be able to get our black screws here, our 15 Torx, and these go all the way around the edge. So we're just gonna take our 15 Torx, like so, pull these out. Now guys, if you have a coupe, um, it, it's not much different. You're just gonna have a few more screws up here like this, and then your trunk lid will be open just like this. So nothing, nothing majorly different. Okay. Now, a lot of times you guys have seen me do the spoilers before, and we've got to take the bumper off before too. And you've seen that, but typically when we're doing these, um, doing these ZR1 wings, um, we have to be able to bolt through into the, the body of the car. So we're going to end up taking the trunk, uh, the inner trunk assembly right here, just the cover, we're going to take it loose. That way we can get in there because we've got to tighten a couple bolts. Okay, so we're almost done here. I can leave my screws right here. All right, so now we got all those. Now what we've got to do is we've got to be able to take this assembly loose. Now there's two little 
Uh, this one doesn't have his um, little net here, but there's two hooks. There's one here and there's one on the opposite side over there. You just want to unscrew these little hooks. Okay. Screw those. Leave, leave them in the trunk so you don't lose them. Okay. I'm going to take those little guys off. Then at that point, you can just pull your rubber back just a little bit here. You can see that rubber just, just keeps it nice and nice and clean looking. But you can pull this back and you can take your nylon pry tool and you can pry this out. You're just gonna get on the edge of it. They're, they're just popped in there with the little spring clips. Okay. You don't need to go any further than this, okay? Um, because we're gonna actually be bolting through right here on each side, so nothing, uh, nothing bad there, but you just need to be able to leave that open just like that. Okay, so now the next thing that we're gonna do is we've gotta get, we've gotta get the rest of the bumper off, okay? So I've got our tape up here like this, and I'm just literally going to get it in here like this and start to pry this loose. Now, if you have the standard C7 um, bezels on here, it works exactly the same way. Start at this edge, going this direction. They will be a little bit harder, okay? They clip in a little bit better. These are the Mirimoto taillight lenses, and they are known for not hooking in as well. Um, and so, um, so this is why you'll start on this end and work this way out. And you'll probably see that we have some stick tape probably right in here to keep that. Yep, I've got some two-sided stick tape in there locking that in there like that. Okay, you can see it right there. So when we go to put these back on, we'll put some new stick tape in here. If you're using the C7 uh, light bezels, you will not have to do that, okay? They'll just, they'll just snap conveniently right back in place. So now I'm going to take this. Now I don't need the tape, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. And we'll do the same thing over on this side. I'm going to toss this over to the side. Like I said, so you just start over in this corner, wiggle it a little bit, you'll feel it pop. And then the, this will come all the way out, just like so. Okay. And if it does get hung on one of these clips, just wiggle it. Use a little finesse and just wiggle it around. It will pop loose. Um, if you just yank it, you're going to break this thing, and these are not cheap, okay? So, I'm going to pull this across like so, and I'm going to get that sticky tape off of there. Okay. Now, normally you would be done with this, and you don't have to worry about it. Now, on this one being the Mirimoto lights, I'm going to pop these, these little guys off, because I don't want them to be getting beat up while we're, while we're working on this. So, I'm just going to set these over to the side. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here, just so we don't hurt them. Hi everybody, you guys all see Terry and I doing these installations on these videos as we show you how to go about doing it. And I'm always saying that if you guys don't want to do this yourself, don't want to tackle it yourself, to reach out and we'll give you a quote on how to do it. Well, a lot of you guys have done that, and in doing so, um, we are now very busy doing this and we've actually turned this into a business. So um, if you are needing anything done as far as, you know, like you've seen us do a front nose, you've seen us do wings, you've seen us do arrow kits, all that type of stuff, reach out to us, we'll get you a quote. If you're in this area, man, we'll be happy to take care of you. Um, and we've also had some people contact us from uh, Florida, from Yosemite, from Los Angeles, and people are bringing their cars um, all the way as far as Las Vegas um, for us to do the, the work. So um, I haven't ever really advertised that. I always have just kind of been passing. I just say, oh, you know, if you want us to do it, reach out, we'll give you a quote. But we are fully going forward with that, and, and it's turning out to be a pretty, pretty cool little deal. Um, most of the people know that by doing what we're doing, they know we know what we're doing because they've seen us actually do the work. And so I've actually offered people that have been far enough away, I've offered to say, hey, you know, be sure to tell your body shop 
um, don't do this, do this, don't do that, whatever it may be, just to make sure that they don't do any damage to the car. And people are saying, no, we just want you guys to do it. So um, if you guys knew are in need of any of this type of work being done, let me know, reach out to me. I'm gonna get that information right here on the screen and we'll be happy to help you. Now, what we've got is we've got a 15 Torx right up in the corner there. And I don't know if the camera can actually see that. It's right there. There you go, it, you can see it. There you go. And there's one on both sides. So you can see right there. Okay. All right, so you probably can see there's the screw right there. My head headlamp is actually lighting it up. And we're just gonna back that little guy out, just like so. Now, if you drop this screw down in your bumper right now, since you're taking your bumper off, not a big deal, right? But don't drop this screw when you're trying to put it back together or you'll be tearing your bumper back off. It's almost impossible to find these screws um, once they fall down in there, okay? Unless you're taking, of course, you're taking the bumper off the car. All right. So now we've got, we've got all six screws on both sides off the bottom. We've got our 10 millimeter uh, screws or bolts, I should say, off of the, above the exhaust. We've got our 215 Torx off of here. We've got our 215s, the 215 Torx off of each wheel well. So now we've got everything free. Everything is clear, all of our screws across the top. So now comes the fun part. And my buddy Herb, that owns this car, did not want to be here for this because he hates seeing his car tore apart. And he hates hearing the noises that this is about to make. So, so what you're gonna do, if you've got two people, you can do it simultaneously. But it's just, just me and Kevin that's filming for me today. So I think I can actually take my headset off now so I don't look too funny. All right. All right, so now what you wanna do is just grab, just grab firmly right here like so, and you're gonna pull, and it's gonna be kinda of like a jerk, so watch this. And now what I've done, if you notice here on the bottom, is I took the box that the spoiler, that the wing came in, and I wrapped it, put some blanket on there, so this way the bumper is not uh, gonna get scratched, okay? So basically all I'm gonna do here is just go like this, like that, Okay, and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Now, sometimes these bumpers come off really easy and sometimes they are a fight. You'll yank it and then nothing happens. So you just have to make sure if it doesn't move, double check, make sure you didn't forget a screw. But if you find that everything is out, then just you just have to kind of wiggle it, okay? So we're gonna do it again. All right guys, so now that we've got both sides free, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna back this bumper off. Now what we're doing is we're just backing it off the exhaust because it's sitting on the exhaust now. So we're just gonna back it off and we're just gonna set it down onto the blanket, okay? So now if we, again, if we were just doing a spoiler change, we wouldn't have to take everything apart, right? We just can reach underneath here. We take our taillights out and, and uh, we take our spoiler bolts off and we're good. Unfortunately, we got a lot more to do with this one, okay? So what we've got to do is we've got to take our lights out and then we've also got to take the spoiler off. Then once we do that, then we can go ahead and we have to disconnect all the wiring. And these are, these are seven millimeter screws in here also that hold these lights in place. Point, we can just kind of set this down. In this case, we'll probably just go ahead and we'll just disconnect it to get it out of the way. And you just we'll press on the clip here. Let me see if I can figure that out. There we go. And 
we'll just pull the light out of the way. Now again, your light will not look like this if you have a regular C7 light. This is the Lamborghini style Miramoto light. Okay. And it's very self-explanatory. Okay. All right. this point we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the other this other harness here free there's a red snap you're gonna snap that back then you're gonna be able to press in on the black part of it and that will take be able to let you take this piece loose there we go and then you have Got another harness right here that you got to pull your red pin back. Press this little guy. There we go. Okay, so now what we've got is we've got our emergency uh, lock assembly that we've got to pull a pin on here. And there's a little plastic retainer, and so you're going to want to grab those with like something that will grab that retainer and be able to allow you to pull it out. And I'm just using a pair of, pair of cutters here to pull that, that plastic plug out. And then at that point, what you do is you slide that out of that slot, just like so. Okay, and then you're going to let that hang. I got myself stuck here. There's also an electric connection right here that you're going to want to pull. And it's just like a side marker light. You pull this little gray tab out, push down, and that separates. Okay, so then at that point, we've got most of everything um, disconnected. Now, on this particular car, um, he's had a bunch of different wiring done, and you wouldn't normally have all of this done in here. So I'm gonna have to pull some of this loose. But normally you would be totally done. You'd be able to take the bumper loose. Um, but like I said, on this one, we're, we've got a little extra work to do. Normally you would be able to just take that off, to take those two connectors loose and be able to pull this bumper up and out of the way. Um, the car has had so many electrical add-ons uh, as far as bumper lighting, uh, center lights, um, various different things. Uh, done to it to be able to make sure that the Marimoto lights work and all that type of stuff that there's a bunch of extra harnesses here and I really don't want to disrupt those so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna manually I'm gonna leave the bumper here in place and I'm gonna do the work right here um, it makes me have to extend myself a little bit over this not too major not, not a big deal but the ideal situation would be to just take your bumper, set it up on, on a cart or a, you know, a stand of some sort, but you're going to be able to see exactly what I'm doing. So, um, but right now let's go ahead and let's take the, the, the uh, 10 millimeter screws here or nuts off. Um, and we're going to, we're going to take these old guys off of here. You're going to need a deep socket. Okay. Like so. whether or not we're going to use my pry, my pry tool here. I'm going to see if we can get this to come free. Now, a lot of times when you do this, um, these little guys are on there and they are on there super tight. Um, the factory tends to put a lot of stick tape underneath and it makes it really tough to get them off. So um, if you can get underneath, they're great. If you can't, 
then what I, what I suggest you do is to take some, some kite string, or fishing string, and you can get, once you get a little edge, you can get in there and you can saw it. You want to be very careful that you don't, uh, you know, mess up your paint, okay? It looks like this one has some stick tape on it, but it is coming loose so far. some stick tape right there I can see it like I said you want to do all your prying get it down in there you don't want to do it right on the outside edge and this way you can get the tape to come loose and you're good so I can see it sticking in there you can just make it free okay it's like that Again, you want to be careful you don't mess up your paint get a good grip on it so when it does come free it doesn't come flying and land on the ground or something there we go you can see all the stick tape there that was on the bottom all right guys so we've got the top of the bumper cleaned up now and so now what we have to do is we've got to take our the uh, original third brake light out. There is four seven millimeter screws. One right here, 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 and here. So we're gonna take those out. All right, so at that point, there is a, a little yellow, or actually it's red, I'm sorry. It's a pull clip, which just flew out at me. All right, that's right here. There's a little guy right there. And then you're gonna press and pull out. So now that we've got this loose, we can go ahead and we should just be able to lift this up and out, just like so. Okay, we're gonna set this off to the side because we're not gonna be using this one anymore. Now that we've got our third brake light out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over here to the bench. And in your kit, you should have these little guys like this. It's just little little threaded studs, and you're gonna thread those in. Now one end is flat, and the other side has, the, um, has a spot for your screwdriver. So you're just gonna be able to snug those up, just like that. Okay, and there should be five of them. You're just going to put those little guys in there like so. Just tug them up. Okay. So now that we got that in there like so, we're going to get rid of this little rubber band here. Get this pulled out. And then we're going to take this. We're not going to put the tape on yet or pull this tape off. But what we're going to do is we're just going to leave it on there. We're going to test fit this. So this little fitting, this little plug, goes right in the hole, like that. And these little guys, they go into the holes on the bumper. You want to make sure you test fit it, and that it's going to go in there and fit, fit like it's supposed to. Okay. Just like that. So now you got that on there like so. Now you can see that, you can see right here inside these holes, you can see how much of this that we've got to cut out of here. So, like I said, what you can do is you can use um, some masking tape in here um, to make it easier for you. But um, like I said, on the white one, we're not gonna have to worry about that, which is, I get to cheat a little bit uh, on that one. So we're just gonna use a Sharpie pin, and we'll mark those, and then we'll be able to pull this off. Now, guys, I want to be able to show you something here. You can see right how this fits. This is the wide body car, okay? Now, I before we started filming, I took this cap and I set it on my bumper. And this actually sticks past my bumper on each side. So that goes to show you that there is two separate sizes and that this fits exactly, has the same amount of gap here 
as my Stingray does, this cap is, sm is bigger on this car, okay? So um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mark those and then we'll get it cut. All right guys, so I've got my Sharpie here and I'm just gonna literally press down and I'm gonna mark this little guy. Just like that. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. I think my Sharpie's dying, but I think that'll work. Okay, so at that point, we can go ahead and we can take this off. And now you can see exactly what we've got to cut out. Now you want to make darn sure that you do not extend past those lines because you've only got just a little bit here, okay? Just that little bit. So you don't want to go out in here and cut that, otherwise you're gonna you're gonna be seeing it. So anyway, that's all we're doing there. Oh, let me show you here. This is the the new brake light like the ZR1 has. So those of you that are wondering what happens with your brake light, that's exactly what you get now. Okay. All right. So moving on to that part, I'm going to get my Dremel ready and I have a special cutoff tool just for the Dremel. Um, and that works for there. But what we're going to do is we're going to drill some holes right here in the corners and then we'll be able to cut this out. We're also going to have to cut this plastic out right here from the back. Um, that, uh, to make it so that the, the stanchions can actually come right out of the bumper. So now we've got our marks in the bumper. What we're going to do now is um, there's a lot of different ways to skin this one. I'm just going to show you how I do it. I take a drill and I drill the corners like so, okay, to get them right on the corners. And then I can use, a, use my, my Dremel cutoff. And let me show you that too, by the way. It's a little bit different. It's a lot thicker cutoff. It's not the ones that you see in the little hobby ones, but it is made by Dremel. You can get these at Home Depot and at Lowe's, um, and they are very, very strong. They hold up really well, um, and it's about 30 bucks, $35, something like that, for a set of like 20 of these, and then you need the adapter to be able to make it work. So it's about a $50 deal for that, but it works awesome, okay? So what we're gonna do here, is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drill this little guy and drill it right at the corner. Okay. Now, guys, this is the one part I'll never get used to doing this. I hate drilling and cutting on these cars. I, I just do. But unfortunately, it's a necessity to be able to get all the goodies to make it look nice. So this is where you really have to be careful, okay? So I'm going to turn this on. And I can turn this down just a hair. I don't know why it's so high. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this little guy. Now this is a spot where you need to be really careful. All right, and that gets us that piece. Then we've got to cut down into, into the, the plastic here.
So now once you've got it cut down like this, now what you can do is you've got to come back behind here and cut this off on the back side. So we're going to be able to, we're going to cut this off. So you can see right down in here, we've got to cut this down and out of the way. Okay. So, you know, just kind of hold this wire out of the way. This little guy should be free. If not, it's my pipe is the plastic. There we go. Okay, so just like that. Get that free. All right, so we're done with that. So now comes the fun part. Okay. If you guys didn't think that was fun, look out. All right, so what we've got now, we've got a couple 10 millimeter bolts here. Okay, or nuts, I should say. Let me set these little guys up here. So we've got to have to take a few things apart so we can start to put our framework on here. Okay, so this little guy just pulls up and out like that. Pretty simple. Just gonna set that up to the side. Now, what we've got, also what we've got to do here is we're gonna take these bumper pieces off, um, and that will allow us to get down in here. We've got to be able to put a couple rivets in. Um, and we've got to be able to attach to this framework. There's also some some uh, glue or butyl glue that was used at the factory, and you can see that right here. It's a buildup. You can see all that. We've got to cut all that out, otherwise this bracketry is not going to fit. All right, guys. Um, now that we've got this cut, I want to touch base before we go any further. Now, I know a lot of you are going, well, why do I need to get a Dremel and do it that way? I can use a side cutter or I can use a die grinder. Um, you know, like I've been talking, you're not going to be able to get that precision of a cut with a die grinder. And you might think that you can, and that's great. But you're taking a major chance that you're gonna you're gonna mess up your bumper. So if you just have to do that, make sure that you put um, you know when you get to this point, put something that will protect this, like you know a steel edge, uh, you know like from a steel ruler or something like that. Put something along this edge because I have seen that get done. That that die grinder blade being as much bigger as it is, it comes in here, jumps, and comes over here and cuts this. So um, just be, be really, really careful, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the inner bumper support off. And those are held on by 10 millimeter screws. drop it out of the way. All right, so now, now that we've got that down, what we've got to do is we've got to get our, we've got to get this stuff out of here. So let's get this up out of the way so you can see what I'm talking about. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull this little guy up too, just to get it out of the way. So now here's the assembly. Okay, this is, I've always put these together to test fit them all, to make sure all the screws are working. Uh, it doesn't need to be chased, everything is working the way it's supposed to. But you can see here, you can't just bolt it on. 
Okay, so what has to happen is we've got to drill out these two rivets right here and then part of the bracketry gets bolted through and into the trunk. The rest of these, these uprights right here, they actually get tucked inside into this frame and into this part of the frame, okay? And then they are screwed with these screws into these ears. This is also, this is one of the sending units for, I believe it's the tire pressure unit. And this has to be just relocated. This, we only, instead of using two screws, we're gonna move it down one screw to get this moved over so we can actually get our bracket in. So um, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this apart and that way um, we can put it in, we can only put it in piece by piece by piece, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our 10 millimeter bolts here, those are nuts, I always wanna call them bolts. And take these guys loose. Them up here. So we can get this receiver off. Now all we're gonna have all we're gonna end up doing is putting it right here, but we're gonna leave it loose for right now just to kind of get it out of the way. Okay, we're gonna pull this little keeper out of here because we need that hole right there to be able to screw into okay so now we've got our upright they are marked left and right okay so this is the right one and we're going to put that up here i'm just going to show you so two things are going to happen here one we've got to we've got to pry these out just a little bit these little ears and we've got to be able to make a little room down here for this stuff to clear out because it won't fit in there nice and flush. You can see, see that. So let's see. See, I might be able to just go ahead and pry these out just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. Okay, and then we're gonna be able to push this in. Now I'll show you what I'm talking about. You can't get, and you wanna make sure that wire stays out there. You're not gonna be able to get this flush because of this stuff on here. So you need your die grinder or your Dremel so you can cut that stuff out. So that's what we're going to do now. All right, guys, so we're going to cut this, this butyl stuff out. And we're just going to go right up there like so. cut it like I did, you shouldn't have any problems. There we go. All right, so now that's clear. All right, guys, so now that we've got the butyl cut out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our bracket on. Now, um, once we get this in here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a little bit of, what I'm using is gasket maker, um, but it's basically just a sealant. Um, you can use, um, you can use Loctite, how, whatever you'd like, but you just want to put something in there that will stop it. I found that the, you know, stop it from vibrating loose. What I found was by using the gasket maker, it doesn't lock down so tight that you can never get it loose, but it keeps it from vibrating. And you won't have that problem. So I'm just going to put a little bit of goop on here. Alright, I'll go ahead and get the 
this one get these started. that one done okay so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the left side up now all right I've already got my my screw gooped up here or my my bolt I like how I call everything the wrong thing anymore I swear there's one On this side, there's actually three screws, or three bolts that go in. We're going to go ahead and tighten these up. Now, I'm not gonna snug. I'm, not gonna, I'm just gonna snug them. I'm not gonna make them super tight right this second because I want to get the rest of the hardware dialed in first. Okay. So the one thing I still have to do here is I've got to drill out these two these two rivets. All right, guys. So now that we've got our screws set, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drill out these two rivets right here. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Now we got that out of the way. All right. So now what we can do is we can take, and our screws are actually going to go like so. This is going to go like this. And then we're going to bolt all the way through. And let's get some goop on them. Gonna leave everything loose right this second. Goop on our bolts or nuts here. get our long bolts and we'll bolt through. So we've got two long bolts that you can see here and those actually have a lock nut on them. And so we're just putting a washer on there. We're gonna push them all the way through to the back side. They're gonna go into the, the cabin of the, of the car inside like that, okay? And then we'll be able to put another washer on the back of it And then it's a 10 millimeter um, nut that's on the back. We're going to tighten it up. All right. Now our upper bracket is tight, and now what we can do is we can start to go ahead and we can put our 
We've got another screw here that I already have the goop on. And this allows me to start the process of doing what we're going to do here. We're going to put this little guy on. And then we'll have to get everything to align up with that. Okay, just like that. So we can set this right there. And we can get another screw. Some more goop. So far, everything is lining up. Okay, and you don't again, you don't want to tighten anything up because you just want to get just get them started. cross bracket over here like so. Go ahead and take this loose. Okay. So before we put the cross bracket on here, we're gonna put our little our little receiver here. We're gonna put it down here like this, okay? This gets it out of the way of the cross member that's going to go right there. Just like that. Okay. Then at that point, we can go ahead and we've got our, got our little cross member here. We're going to use a little more goop. Okay, put that in there like so. I want to start that. Okay. Then we're gonna do our other another screw. We're gonna bring it over here. Now, if this stuff doesn't line up like instantly, it's not a big deal. You just have to massage it a little bit to get it to go. But what you want to do is you want to kind of, while you're working on that assembly, you want to make sure that it stays loose so you can maneuver everything around. But then don't forget to tighten the screws. There we go. So there's that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tighten these little guys. All right, guys. That is pretty much it. Now. As you can see, I had just put these together just to be able to test everything and make sure they work. So I'm going to go ahead and take these loose now. 
wanted to make sure that all the threads were were done and I wasn't gonna have a problem with them after we went through this whole whole thing. So I'm just gonna take these little guys off. And then we're gonna now we're gonna take these screws loose and put some goop on them and put them right back in. Now let me show you something here real quick. So if you notice here that this stanchion is actually pointed backwards. You've got three screws here. You have four that mount, but you have three up at the top. So the one that has the screw to the back is where you want it with it leaning backward, not leaning forward. Okay, because these stanchions are not perfectly straight. Okay, so that's how you want to make sure that you put them in. Guys, we're getting pretty close to actually being able to uh, put the bumper back on. All right, guys. So now we have got our stuff almost done. So now we've got all of our bracketry done here. And the last step that we're going to do, or last couple steps we've got to do here, is we've got to go ahead and we've got to drill these holes out. Okay, so now we can put this little snap back up in here in place get that wire out of the way. We had to pull this loose because we wanted to make sure that the uh, the wire wasn't in the way. There we go. We got that. So now we're going to do these drill these holes. So now that we've got everything all put back together, we've got to go ahead and put our bumper, our inner bumper back on. All right, once you get one, you should be able to put them to fairly line up for you. guys we've got it all put back together as far our I shouldn't say back together but we've got all of our bracketry installed everything's in there nice and solid all right guys so what we've got to do now before we put our lights in is we've got to go ahead and put our our wing cap on okay so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stuff our wire through the hole okay get that in there like that and then we're gonna go ahead and just put the holes into the bumper and you saw I took the tape off already. I cheated off camera. Okay. There's that. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put the nuts on. So now guys, I also want to tell you something too here. If these these nuts are not going on these these threaded studs easily, don't force them because what will happen is that the nut itself will get locked and then the, st the stud itself will start to still thread into the, the body of the cap and then you take a chance that you could um, actually poke the cap uh, at the top and you can see it um, from the outside. So you want to be very careful of that that you don't make that mistake. 
All right, so now the cap is on. So now we just have to go ahead and we insert our, insert our, um, our lights back into their sockets. Okay. When you're hooking them up, make sure that you don't forget to make the connection on your lights. So now we've got our lights all done. We've got everything ready to go. The only thing that we have left that we have to do is to make some connections. So we want to make sure that we plug our third brake light back in. Okay. And it just plugs in, snaps. Okay. No big deal there. And then you have your, um, you've got your, I guess it's what am I trying to say? It's the it's the keyless lock or the emergency lock cylinder, um, in case you need to get into the car. So that is actually um, let's see if we can get this little guy straightened out. This little tab's kind of bent. So let's go ahead and we'll get that in there. So this has to come up, and then this slides into the bumper. Hopefully Kevin's camera can get in there. But we slide it over like that, see if we can get it locked in place. And that's very vital you get this part done right. Because if you don't, you won't be able to get into your car in the event that your battery goes dead. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that it goes into its slot and it's locked in there like so. So yeah, I'm pulling up there and you can't, it's not coming out. Now we've got a little press pin here that goes in. Let's see if we can get this out of the way so we can get that in there. There we go. So that locked it in place. So now we're good, okay? So now the next thing we have to do is we've got to get maybe this stuff up there like so to get it cleared so it'll clear that bumper cover that bumper piece. And then we're going to take this little guy and we're going to plug this back into here in just a second. Now what we've got, one more thing, we've got our inner bumper cover here, our little uh, shock absorber per se. And this little guy goes in just like so. So you can see these little ears. Let's see where they at here. Are those little ears right there? They're going into these slots. Okay, so that kind of makes it go like this. Let's see if I can get it to go. There we go. Just like that. This little plug kind of goes in there like that. And then this goes on to these bolts at the top. And at that point, we can put our nuts on. is we've got to go ahead and we've got to get our bumper we've got to, well we've got to plug our, our connection together here our main connection otherwise we won't have any lights so we've got to make sure that snaps in place there we go did you hear it and then we're going to push the little red tab all the way back into the plug 
Okay. All right. So now at this point, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to lift this bumper. We're going to set it up over this edge. Okay. And let me go ahead and get that out of the way. So we're going to set it up to the exhaust. Put it up. This goes up like so. This is a tight squeeze, guys. So there we go. just like that. You want to make sure that your your these black tabs are all the way up above, okay, and not below. Okay. Once you got that, then what you want to do is you want to get this aligned up. So this will go on. like that okay and then you're going to do the same thing over on this side and again there's these red tabs that go into the black slots and you just want to make sure that those line up all right all right so then at that point, Kevin, kind of take a look down here. Let's look in the slot here. And you can see how those uprights fit in there nice and pretty. All right, so now we'll go ahead and we'll be able to put the, the bottom square stanchion pieces on. So um, at that point, um, before we go any further, be sure and check your lights. Make sure everything's working so you don't end up having to take the bumper back off because you forgot to hook something up. So we're going to check those, and then we'll come right back. Now, once we get these tightened down like this, now we can go ahead and we can put in all of our screws here and put our screw our stanchions on. So we might as well go ahead and screw the stanchions themselves on right now. So now that we've got our, our stanchion pieces down in here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our, our uh, screws into the bumper here so we get this totally lined up. And we're going to put those in here. That. This all should line up without having to fight it. If it's fighting you to put these back in, you probably got something a little bit out of alignment and you need to work on that figure out where it's coming from you can adjust it all we need to do now guys is we just got to snap this back in place so this isn't a big deal here okay I'm just gonna go ahead and put this back in here and there's you just push this the hole or the the, the screw hole here or put the bolt right through the screw hole and then you take this rubber and you just kind of lift it up over this over this uh, plastic here and then you're gonna bang it in like that it just goes in with a snap just like that Herb's about ready to have a heart attack over here guys there we go all right so then at that point we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna Put in the little little wing nuts that we had in here before. All right. And there we go. All right, so the trunk is all put back together. Now all we have to do is finish the outside. All right, guys, now that we got the trunk all, all tightened up. All we got to do now is we got to put our stanchions on. Now, 
I want to point something out to you. Um, this goes for the the Grand Sport wide body kit as well as the standard kit is that the stanchions are actually left marked left and right. But for some reason they got their mold wrong and so your left is actually your right and your right is actually your left. Okay, so when you look at it, you'll be able to see it. It's like right up here. This is the, the left side. We're going to actually put it on the right side of the car. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a little bit of goop here. Get a couple of them going here. Now, you'll see that I've got this really long extension, okay? The reason behind that is that the, the stanchion itself is actually bowed to the outside edge, and so it, it makes it hard to be able to get in there. Um, so I do this, and this way I can, I can get, get in there. And you just wanna get them started, Tighten them up until you got all four of them in there. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is sometimes these kits come with a little rubber gasket. Um, it goes right underneath, like this one here, you can see on the stanchion. It's already got the gasket on it. Sometimes the gasket just comes in the kit and you have to put it on, but this one was already on this one. So. Kind of a crap shoot on that one. And then you just want to make sure that it goes and seats itself. And basically all it's doing is just pinching itself right up to the bracket. And you're good. So that's one down. Now we've got the other one to do. Couple of them going here. If you guys, if you guys have a set of a long set of T, T handles, those will work too. Put the bump, the bottom of the bumper back together, and we still have to put the wing on, and then attach the winglets onto the wing. For those of you that are thinking about bringing me a a, 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 a kit. Um, It'd be better that you send it to me or have it sent to me or have me order one for you ahead of time so I can have the winglets already attached to the car or to the wing before you get here so it's nice and, nice and strong. Okay, there we go. So now the next step is to, we have to hook some brackets onto the wing that go onto here. And then it's just buttoning everything back up. All we have to do now is we've got to put our brackets onto the wing itself. Okay, so we're just going to set those there like that, set them in place. There's only one way to do it. These are both universal, so it doesn't really matter which, which side is which. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to goop again. We're going to goop the screws. Okay, we're going to put those in there like that. Might as well do all of them at once and get it over with.
Hey guys, this video has been filmed almost in real time. I'm going to have to have to uh, shorten it up quite a bit, but um, it's uh, it, it's definitely a all day process. So if you're thinking about wanting to wanting to do this, um, just be prepared to either drop the car off with us, or um, or we'll be able to. Uh, I got the wrong screw here. Um, we'll be able to do it for you why you wait but it will take you all day all right so we're just gonna go and we're gonna tighten these up now you don't want to like screw these down so tight that you strip it out of the uh, out of the wing just want to make sure they're nice and snug all right and then the uh, your, your uh, thread lock, whatever you may use, will do all the work for you that way. Okay, but you can see I'm snugging them up. I just want to reef them down. Okay, so there's that. So now we're ready to go ahead and put the wing on the car itself. All right, guys. So the moment we've been waiting for, right? We're going to go ahead and we're going to put this on the on the car. Now, if you look here, let's see if I can get this without moving. You can see it has two positions, right? One of them is a naked position and or a, or a neutral position, I should say. And the other side, when you the, the higher up version is the spot that creates the downforce. So we don't want to. He's not taking this car to the track, so we're going to put it in the neutral position, right? Which is the down the down spot. If you put it up here, you get between five and seven hundred pounds of downforce on the back tires, which will eventually wear the crap out of the tires, right? So if you get it, but it is adjustable, so you can you can change it however you want, okay? So if you do take it to the track, you can adjust it. So we're just gonna go ahead and put it on here like so. And we've got, got these screws here. Like that. So all you're doing guys is just gonna have to line those holes up just like that. Just do them finger tight for right now. And then this one here, like I said, we're going to do the bottom one. There's that. All right, so now all we're going to do is tighten it up. Now the only thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and put the rest of the car back together um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll epoxy the wing on. But... Alright guys, so what you want to do is you want to go ahead and just get your other screws back in place here. And sometimes these will line up just fine, other times they won't. So you need to just be aware that that's the case, that it can, that it may fight with you a little bit. screws or two torque screws here into the wheel well to lock this down.
All right, so that one's done. So now we can go ahead and this little ear here goes up underneath. Goes up inside like that. Okay. Just like that, and then this snaps in place. Just like that, okay? Then at that point, what you can do, take our little adapter off, grab our screws, our four screws here. And just get them all started, and then you can snug them up. It's like that. Okay, so now we just repeat that on the other side. Attach the winglets. All right, guys. So what we're going to do here is we've we have the two-sided stick tape that it came with. But what I did is I cut the center of it out. Now my original one is was only done by the two-sided stick tape, and it only lasted maybe a month, and then it started getting wobbly, and I thought I was going to lose my wing. So what I decided to do is on all the ones that we install here at the shop is that we we use this two-sided stick tape here to be able to act as a barrier to make it stick immediately, but then also it holds the epoxy inside, so this way it doesn't ooze out and go all over the wing. So what I'm doing here is I've got JB Weld, it's a 15 minute bond, see if I can hold it right there, and I also have the pre the pre-mixing st uh, stick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna insert it into here, and I'm not putting it too heavy, just enough that it's thick enough that it's going to grab Just like this. So I'm not getting it on on the, the tape. Right? And then I make sure that I got it all done. Just like that. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna it's thick enough that it will ooze out a little bit, but it's not gonna ooze out all over the wing and the winglet. Now you can use the other stuff that they have. They have a one minute epoxy, they've got a five minute epoxy. I have used the one minute and it ends up plugging these up so fast that you can't, you might as well have to, you have to do one of these for each one. So they, they kind of make it expensive to do it that way. Now, that looks like, pretty much looks like enough. I think that's gonna be okay. I'll put just a little bit more in there because I want it, I want it to make sure that it grabs. Okay, just like that. And set that down. And then you can see I've got my tape here ready to go. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set this in here, just like that. I'm gonna wiggle it around. Okay, just like that. And find its happy spot, right where it belongs. And then I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna tape it on. Okay, so I'm going to finally find its happy spot again, bring it around, and go up underneath the wing, just like that, okay, I'm going to do that in a couple spots. Now, if you are bringing it to our shop to do this, right, this is why I want you, I would like for you guys to bring me 
or send me the wing ahead of time or have me order it for you. Because this way I can have all this ready to go for you and you don't have to be waiting for the epoxy when we're all done. So I'm gonna do that, hold this in place. And we're gonna put just a little bit of pressure there. So these are taunt, this is taunt. Okay, and then we're just gonna let this, tonight we're just gonna let this sit tonight and it, it'll be great in the morning, there won't be any problems with it at all. Okay, and then we're gonna set that little guy down. And then again, just be careful, get it started. Bring it right over to its slot. Wiggle it around real good. That way it's, you know, it's getting a good bond. Take your tape. Find its happy spot. So when I refer to happy spot, I'm talking about right where you feel the wing is completely flat in the slot. Okay, I'm gonna do that a couple times. So I think this has, this epoxy has a 3,700 pound per square inch uh, holding capability. So I don't think this wing is, this these winglets are gonna go anywhere. But I definitely wouldn't trust them with just this two side stick tape that comes with it. Besides putting our tail light bezels on, I think we're good. I think it looks, I think it looks great, and this will be ready to go first thing in the morning, and uh, we'll be able to give it back to Herb and let him let him play with it again. Um, so anyway, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm not going to bore you with putting those light covers back on. Um, they literally they snap in just like they snapped out, except like I was telling you on the Mirimoto lights. They, um, you have to use some two-sided stick tape right here to be able to lock them in place. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, so anyway, guys, I just want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully uh, this helped. Um, hopefully when it comes time that you're ready to do a ZR1 wing, um, you know exactly what to get. I'm going to put all of that information here on the screen. Uh, you can, like I said, you can get it in the carbon fiber, which is this one here. Uh, it is a little more money, um, but if you are taking it to the track and you want that super stability, do the carbon fiber. If you're doing it more for looks like I did with my car, uh, then you can get away with the carbon flash. Now, it just depends on what you what look you're going for, too. Herb likes a lot of, uh, a lot of carbon fiber. I, I, I can take it. I can leave it. It doesn't matter to me, um, and so I kind of went... The, the other way with the carbon flash. Uh, the carbon flash ones, they have talked about those. I, I know that some of you guys have watched this. Uh, they talk about how that the wing is a little bit, uh, it has, has movement. Um, yes, it does have movement. They are now being uh, shipped with the stabilizer bars. Um, so what we do is we open those, open up the wing and we actually put the stabilizer bar, we epoxy that in. And so that stiffens it back up. So, um, so even those do a really good job. 
I've had mine to some pretty decent speeds. I don't want to say how high, but they they do they do actually work. So um, I I think you'll really like either one of them. But like I said, if you are if, if you are taking the car, and I've talked to some customers, that's all they do is take it to the track, then definitely get the carbon fiber one. Okay. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching today. Hopefully they helped. It was helpful. And uh, like I said, I'm going to put all that information on the screen. If you guys have not already subscribed to you, to my channel, please subscribe. It helps me a lot. Uh, we are, I think, just about 11,000 subscribers. We've got about 60,000 viewers, but a lot of people don't want to subscribe. And so if you guys can subscribe, it would really help. Um, like I said, it, it helps me with the vendors. Uh, it helps me with get, getting sponsorship, and it also makes it so I'm more easily found on the internet. So anyway, guys, just thanks again, and hopefully you guys had a great Christmas. This is being filmed the day after Christmas, so hopefully this will be out probably around the first of the year, maybe the first week. So hopefully it, it, uh, you guys all had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. All right? Thanks a lot. We'll, take, we'll see you next time.